Ah, cords, lead sheets, lead sheets. I got five different projects going on, eight lead sheets, and everyone wants cords on there and they have to be super big. This is gonna make me go crazy. But we're gonna try a plugin today and I think these two plugins might help you at least speed up your workflow. Hi everybody, welcome, welcome back. Jim here, I hope everyone's doing well and making great music. So by the end of this video, you'll have an idea how to work with plugins more and see if these plugins help you. I hope they do, because it can save us time. So let's go. All right, so you might be interested in getting these plugins after you see the portion of the video when I'm gonna show what they can do. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to locate these plugins. And thank you, by the way, um, the programmers for creating them. And I apologize in advance because I might mispronounce your profile name or your name in general. Sorry, but thank you so much. Go ahead and type in MuseScore plugins. Okay, awesome, now we're at the plugin site. And I'm gonna go kind of quick because I've demonstrated this in another video, but please reach out in the comments if you want me to clarify anything. Awesome. So we are simply gonna look for two plugins and how to do that, one of them is under analysis and the compatibility. Anyone using MuseScore 1? Just wondering, maybe not. So I'm gonna click apply, I'm using MuseScore 3.6 and I am now finding chord identifier. So you click on that and then you get all this cool information on what the plugin does. And then you scroll all the way down. And then after scrolling all the way down, look for attachment. You're gonna click on the first one, the QML file. After you click on it, it will download. It's fairly quick. And to save time, I've already downloaded it. So you're gonna show in folder. And then once you see it in the folder, you're gonna go ahead, I'll drag this over here. You're gonna copy and paste. That's what I do because I have a lot of files. And then you're gonna to go to documents and you're gonna look for MuseScore, and in my case, MuseScore 3. So then I click here and then I find plugins and I copy and paste. Let's run to MuseScore and make sure everything's working correctly. All right, so I'm in MuseScore and now I am gonna to go to plugin manager. I'm gonna make sure those are checked off and they are. So now MuseScore will read those plugins, great. I'm gonna try the newer plugin first because I haven't. So let's take a look at that. I'm not gonna highlight anything. What that means is once you initiate the plugin, it will read your whole piece or song. I am here, plugin, then you go all the way down where it says chords and I'm gonna look for, yep, chord identifier, pop jazz. And you get this prompted up. Symbol, normal. Bass, I'm gonna choose yes. And then version, normal. Highlight chord notes, no. On incomplete chords, should I suggest or show question mark? I guess I'll put suggest. I'm guessing question mark means it doesn't know it, so it's leaving it up to the human brain, which is great. All right, let's click OK. All right, so right away, we've got a lot of chords here, and as you can see, we move to another page, spacing and all that, no problem. Why are the chords in red? I'm guessing because it's a, like a warning sign. There's many different ways to voice things. You can use them. If you print it, the PDF print will be red too, because I tested it. How you can fix that, you can just go ahead and click on the first chord and then go to select all similar elements and then go to inspector and change the color if you want. That was not planned in the video, but I think that's a good thing to share. All right, so we have a lot of chords here. You can go ahead and play it back and listen. And if you can't hear the chords, that means you have the play option checked off. So that's simple. Just go to format and then go to style. After style, go scroll down and look for chord symbols and make sure play is checked off. I'm preparing this for newer musicians, so I need to change some of these chords. So let's review what we did. We, I didn't select any measures. I simply just initiated the plugin. Um, I do want to try one thing before I go to the my uh, plugin that I always use, and I wanna go to Core Identifier Pop Jazz again. This time I'm just gonna say show. Okay, so it wants you to be the music theory person, which is totally cool. It might have a hard time reading it. That would be a good worksheet. All right, so now I'm gonna go to my plugin that I've used a lot, and what I wanna demonstrate, let's say I only want chords on three measures for whatever reason. So you just simply click and then hold the shift key down and click again, and you should just see the chords appear for measures two, three, and four. Here we go. Plugins, chords, and then we're gonna go to my chord identifier. And this one has um, less prompts. Symbol, normal, bass, no. Versions, I will put no for now. Awesome. So I just read those three bars. Mm -hmm. 
the sauce, I would actually just make it more of an anchor and put G there again. Again, this is for younger musicians. Now let's just go ahead and have this plugin read everything. So make sure nothing is highlighted and you're gonna go down to chords, plugins to chords, and then go to my first one, specialized. Oh, not bad, it's saving me some time. Uh, there's a lot of sus going on, but measure 13 would sound great to a B minor, let's just go there. All right, so let's say there's some chords in here you don't like. You got the E minor, that's great. Uh, so here I could just go ahead, hi, um, click on that. I control A and then I just press G and then enter. It's done. All right, cool. So what plugin do you think you might use? Let me know in the comments and let me know how it works. I'd be very curious. Also, I'm going to leave in the description a link of an old thread with the red chords. Uh, there's a lot of good writers in there, really good explanation. And one of them is Mark Sabatella. He's everything MuseScore and he does a wonderful job. He wrote Mastering MuseScore and he has great classes on it. You want to take advantage of that for sure. So until next time, Happy music making and please take care. Oh, and hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the video. Take care. Bye-bye.